everybody, and welcome to the Invincible Podcast, probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. This is a show where friends talk all things Invincible, a comic book and animated series created by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. Uh, on this episode, we are talking all about our recent trip to C2E2, the latest Invincible news. We've got another issue spotlight, as well as a ton of listener emails. I am one of your hosts, Ryan, and joining me today is Bill. Oh, hi, everyone. How's it going, man? It's going good. What you been up to? Who else do we have on the show? <laughs> I just wanted to, to see how long <laughs> I wanted to see how long you would be able to talk. It was like this long. feels wrong. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell it was bothering him. Why? Yeah. How are you doing, man? You know, I'm surviving. I've been sick since we got back from C2E2. Bill predicted it that by the Tuesday we were all back, we'd be sick. And I don't think everybody got sick, but I'm certainly still sick. So I'll mute a couple of times, I'm sure, as I have like a coughing attack. But other than that, I'm doing great. Do you think it was from C2E2? I think it was a little bit C2E2, a little bit. Nicole took a trip and went to visit her sister while I was in C2E2. And she, I think, picked something up there. Mm -hmm. And also just that I'm a teacher and around kids all the time. That and flying just the get sick. You're just yeah. being bombarded. By yeah, like, I really just had no chance, I think. Yeah. Hello, yeah. it's TJ. I'm, I'm, it's TJ. <laughs> Hello, it's TJ. I was here's I was TJ. Hoping. We're talking about my health, TJ, okay? It's important. But yes, TJ's here too. I was on the cusp of saying, what about you, TJ? How are you feeling? Oh, I'm uh not as bad as 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 Wyatt. I had a little tickle in my throat and a little here and there, but uh, you know, getting yeah. through, getting through. What kind of fun stuff do we have planned for this episode, Ryan? We have so much fun stuff. This is going to be a good one. I'm excited to talk about a couple of news items. We've got some really fun emails. Um, Bill, do you happen to have any re recent reviews that have been left we for us? We do have a review. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a new one, but if it's if it's not, you know, we get to read it twice on the show, then congratulations. You're I'm pretty sure it's a new person. one. I think it's a new one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure too. So this is from Jaden144. Uh, the title is The Invincible Podcast. Nice five-star review. Thank you so much. Not sure if this will make it in the episode, but I just wanted to say how awesome it is to have a podcast so dedicated to the series. It's my favorite comic and TV show, so hearing you guys talk about it with as much interest as me makes me really happy. I like how you dive into everything Invincible related, like the Adam Eve and Guarding the Globe game. I've played both, but don't know how many people who have personally. I often listen to these the podcasts on long drives, and since I started recently, I have a lot to catch up on. Love the podcast and all its episodes and segments. 100% recommend to anyone remotely interested in the series. Awesome. An ongoing theme is people listen to us on long car rides because our episodes are very long. So uh, I don't know if they didn't used long. to be. They've we've talked. Which is weird because everyone's like, oh, you're still doing the podcast? What do you guys talk about? But our episodes are getting longer and longer. Like when we were yeah. just audio only, they used to be like 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Really? Now we go no, like, I don't oh, remember they that. were hour and a half long. They were mm, never that short. So. 45 minutes? I fucking wish. I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> I wish. And take a Why, look. You used to be a listener before you were a host. What? When would you listen to the podcast? It was a lot on drives, like where I, I commute to work and have like a 30 minute drive to work. Um, and so it was a lot of times on like drives or if I was exercising, like if I'm going on a jog or yeah. something, I put it on. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's when I listen to most of my podcasts when I'm doing, uh, like a, you know, mundane task at work or going on drives yeah. or something like that. I mean, do you yeah. listen to, I mean, don't you listen to music or podcasts when you're one wheeling to and from work? Yeah. It was a pretty stupid question. Cause like, <laughs> I think it's always the same. It's like, yeah, when you're driving. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I tend to, I tend to like, listen to podcasts. It, I'm, I'm like, yeah, when? When else would you? Oh, when I'm sitting at dinner with my family, yeah, I yeah. Fucking have when, my I, headphones in. <laughs> when I go to the theater to watch a movie, you know, I, 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 I just sit and stare at a wall and put a podcast <laughs> on. That's all. <laughs> oh, but thank you for the for the great review. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, you mentioned guarding the globe, which we, I mean, should be live now, if not very soon. We had Damien from Ubisoft Montreal Mobile. I'm sorry, Ubi Ubisoft Barcelona Mobile. Come on and uh, talk with us all about creating uh, the Garden the Globe game. He is the game director over there, and we had a great chat with him. So that episode is live over on YouTube. Please check it out. It was a lot of fun. Um, they're, really, uh, they're really putting a lot of care into this, this game, and uh, you know, they are fans of the comic. 
so it's been it's been pretty cool uh and there was also recently a pretty big update which we got to talk all about so yeah Ryan, you are the king of segways, man. I can't believe you did that. I'm getting there, man. That was great. Thank you. That was fucking great, man. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even notice. I just just go. I just go. Uh, Why? Speaking of just going. (laughs) Speaking of just going. No, I want that didn't work, Bill. Where are we going? Yeah, where are we? I don't know. Anywhere. That one works for anything. (laughs) That would have worked. But no, I wanted to bring up Wyatt. You actually uh, got a Battle Beast in Garden of the Globe recently to what? uh, uh, Elite Uh, or the Orange Plus. Orange with the border. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Epic. I think it's Epic epic. Plus. Yeah. yeah. I I had to. A while back, I was like leveling up Alan and Battle Beast because they're both the same, like from Beyond This Worlds. And I was like, I if I'm gonna get either of them far, I've got to just pick. Oh, yeah. And I, so I still have it. Many Allens died to bring us this victory. Um, I still have my original Allen, who's at like the pink color. That's good. Um, but I may need to use him have, at some point. I have both uh, of mine. Eventually, but both of mine are at pink, and I have a bunch of a handful of Allens saved, and a bunch of like flax and leaders and everything. And I'm like, yeah, I can commit to one of them right now. I just can't bring myself to do it yet. I don't know. Yeah. I have an orange. Um, yeah, and we had the uh, we had the the one of the events happening that would reward you with either like Damien Darkblood or the Flaxen Leader. So I was like There's so many on the app, probably more than I have been the past ever since it came out, really making sure that I was getting as much of those as I could and have just been using those to upgrade it as much as possible. It's been really fun. Between the uh, the new Cecil's Nightmare and um, there was another really good bundle. Um, I, I'm sitting on like 30 dossiers right now. Once again, just because just waiting for another good like double elite event because that double yeah. elite event yeah. that happened, I think it happened after we last recorded. Uh, it was around C2E2 or something. It was so good. There were so many good uh, roles in the shop and everything. It was pretty fun. Yeah. I have like 20 nice. dossiers right now because yeah. of what else am I going to use my gems for? And they had that thing in the shop where it's like 870 That's gems. What I mean, yeah. You get five of them. Mm. I hit it like three times. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, if, I mean, it's, what? It's how many deal. dossiers do you have? I don't have any dossiers right <laughs> I now, have but zero. I do have I, I do have, have a lot zero. of gems, and I wasn't thinking about how there was that stuff in the shop with for gems. So Good I deal. might start yeah. might start spending, you know. Yeah. So yeah, uh, if you want to hear more of us talking about go- guarding the globe, please go listen to that interview. It was a lot of fun, and hopefully, we'll have Damien back on in the future when more things come out for the game, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see how the game changes. Um, but We've got a few emails. I want to go over one right now before we get into the latest news, just as a like nice little introductory email. This comes from Jake Swartzy. He says, hey, guys, I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' season three predictions. This next season is going to be the craziest season of the show by far. I don't know if you guys have plans for this, but I would love to hear the new readers again and hear their thoughts on season two. I have two quick questions for you guys. First, of all the 16 alternate marks we see in the comic, which one is your guys' favorite? My personal favorite is the full black mask mark. He just looks so menacing in every panel that he's in, and his short backstory is very interesting as well. I'm pretty sure he killed Debbie in his dimension. My second question is, do you guys think the conquest fight is happening in season three? I would love to hear guys' thoughts, and I'm excited for the future. Jake Swartzy. So first up, New readers, thoughts on season two. Bill, has Liz watched season two? She has not. And I'm she, pretty I'm pretty did, sure did we do... had them on after the first season, right? You did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I did. remember that. That is a very yeah. clear, like, why did we not think about that? They're they're gonna come on eventually. We'll bring them back. Yeah. Up. We'll try. I think at minimum, we will get their impressions and mm-hmm. relay what their thoughts i don't know we'll have yeah. to see if they're up for coming back on and uh I, I i'm not sure if Brittany has watched season two yet i will reach out i just talked to her like yesterday so i will find out if she's watched season two and see if she's up for you know even recording a little video thing or something we'll figure that out but that's that's great um as far as our favorite of the 16 alternate marks and these are at the end of issue 51 right guys I believe it was. Uh, that's, a, that's a TJ yeah. question. That is a TJ question. Oh, 48. Wait. 48. No, 58. 58. Oh. Invincible War sees it is 60. This came two issues before. Thank you. Yes. 58, yeah. because then 59 um, was Powerplex, and then Power it goes Black right into 64. 60 as the war. 
Perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this there's is also the, the the spread of all of them over a bunch of different cities. That's in sixty, which is yeah. just the ones that remain. There's just eight there, yeah. right? But of the sixteen on that sixteen panel page, what do you guys think? Do you have a favorite? I do. I, I'm just gonna go with like instinctively which one I'm drawn to, and it's the yellow suit with the cape and the black eyes. Oh yeah, the one that we actually oh, see. Oh, yeah, in in we see him. Two, we see him in, in season, season two. Yeah. He's the one that kills <laughs> Angstrom's son in Chainsaw. So right. yeah, I see a lot of people refer to him as Sinister Mark on yeah. like TikTok and whatnot. They've like mm-hmm. given him that name in the same way a lot of people talk about like Mohawk Mark. For some reason, Sinister Mark has seemed to stuck around for him. Um, I don't. I feel like all of these. Like if you saw more of them and like you gave us more of any of them all of the designs are really cool the one that sticks out to me the most just because it does make me curious just how different it looks is the one that has no hair and it's all scarred and the goggles are like Mm -hmm. embedded in his skin Mm -hmm. that's like uh the Mm -hmm. second to the bottom row that one's really fascinating to me just because like he looks very angry he looks very like scarred it makes me one makes me curious about the backstory i think even more than just the alternate costumes yeah I think um, in a similar way, the one that draws my eyes the most and the one I really think about is just that red. I don't know. There's something about that one being mm-hmm. red that really stands out. Having the cape, the black goggles, that one's pretty cool. It's kind of like the yeah. mashup with him and Omni-Man in a way. Yeah, it's the Omni-Man the color hair, scheme for The sure. hair is a bit shorter. Um, yeah, I kind of like that one. Um, Man, it's tough to pick one. But the one that draws my eye is is the one with the mask that's full face but it's just like hanging down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I like that. Cause I imagine like him, like stopping and it like swooshing forward or whatnot. But I do want to bring up one other one is mm-hmm. most people reading invincible. I, I know, you know, me, Ryan and bill definitely, we didn't even think that Mark could be Asian until the show. Uh, and there's one, it's the third row down second one uh, from the left. And he's wearing one of the forgive me my ignorance, but I don't I don't know what it's called, but like a collared shirt that's that's like mm. that was my about? second pick, yeah. Jay. I love yeah. That, yeah. that design. So I'm that wondering, cool like, design. has he always been like? Has, is it? We always question, like, has he always been Asian in Kirkman's mind, or was this it, something hmm. that came through for the show, or you know, because yeah. we never knew. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Just out of curiosity. Also, shout out to the bottom left yes. one because that's clearly Flaxen gear. Mm-hmm. Like all of the other costumes are either like, you know, like we said, Omni Man color Mash scheme of an invincible suit or a Viltramite invincible suit. It's cool that that one is very clearly the same as like the Flaxen armor. So it's cool to imagine what events took place that he maybe like came of age in the Flaxen dimension, possibly. Or wow. yeah. could yeah, you cool. imagine Mark in a tech jacket? Yeah. Oh my that God. Would be cool. That'd be amazing. Would he just power through it? Like, would he just break it? No, because it it like it amplifies the strength of the user. So yeah, that's why like Galdarians are like normal strength. They're not, like they need it to like mm. kind of be normal. And then a human wears it, and they're like super strong. Remember when? Should we? When Brit wore it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, that was really cool. That was a cool. Villain. And then last shout out, the bulletproof costume is also pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah. What I was about to always do one above it. Mm-hmm. oh yeah we just listed all of them so pretty much, all of them, apparently. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, the the two that we didn't mention are like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing jake asked about was um do you think and we'll try and keep this quick just quick quick fire version of the answer we're not going to get into it too much right now do you guys think the conquest fight is happening in season three no yes yes I guess no. I think that he will make an appearance and they will begin the fight, but the yeah. fight will be the beginning of season four. Yes. I agree with that. So, yeah. I think possibly both then. Yeah, yes, I agree yeah. with that. Like, I think it could happen. The fight starts, yes. I think. Okay. And then do, I think that, do I think that in Invincible gets hit? Will we hit? see the end of the fight? Do I think that Invincible gets hit by kind of say Yes. No. You think that we could see the entirety of the fight in season three? I don't think that's crazy, but I, I'm, I I'm gonna say crazy. I'm gonna say it ends with the, the beginning. I don't know. We'll see. No. Excited to talk more about that. Um, we've got 
a few more emails. Uh, but before that, the latest Invincible news. Um, since our last recording, U2's, a vinyl statue company, has um, put up and announced or announced the pre-orders. Um, I think they both announced it and pre-orders went live. Sorry. Uh, their vinyl statue, which is Mark, or I'm sorry, Omni-Man holding Mark and going through the train. Um, it's coming out uh, September slash October. They kind of give a window there. <clears throat> And the pre-order is available now, if it is still available. I want to say it was about 40 bucks or so. Looks pretty sweet. I uh, I okay. prefer, I think me personally, I think I prefer this to the Funko Pop scene version. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I dig. I it's have... rather adorable. It is very cute. Yeah. yeah and I think that's why it works a even a little better than the Funko Pop scene is that like, it is the most gruesome thing in season one of the show. And so to take that and make it cute little figures mm -hmm. that are in it mm -hmm. makes it extra funny to me, I think. I have the final space U2s. Oh, that's right. I forgot. They're really, that are really cool. They're nice. Yeah. Uh, speaking of vinyl figures, though, I got the Nendroid that was announced at oh, San Diego so Comic-Con last year. And it is, no exaggeration, probably my favorite. It's I can't say my favorite Invincible merch, but of all the statues and things like that, yeah. this is by far my favorite. This thing is so, not only just cute, but it's just so high quality. Like swapping yeah. out the face plates, the fists, the hands, like the poses, the, the different things you could do with them is so easy. You could just like, you know, easily swap out the different expressions and and it all just feels like great like and it looks solid it's not like oh it's the hand is a little awkward it's not really meant to do that and there's like the gap that's shown when you you know it has none of that it is awesome you guys need to get one of these that's hmm. very cool how much were those again i don't remember i want to say 40 ish or so Oh, it's not bad. I'm not sure. Yeah, little faces. There's I'm a... surprised that I know we saw the like blank models at at San Diego last year, I think. Yeah, but I'm surprised gray... at how small it is. Like, to for how much articulation it has and like accessories and everything, it's kind of crazy how small it is. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So definitely check these guys out. This is really cute. I liked them a lot. But yeah. Um, and then finally, man. All three of these have to do with vinyl, vinyl figures, <laughs> right? Remember there was a time that these didn't exist. TJ, yeah, TJ yeah. predicted for like six mm -hmm. years straight that we'd get Funko Pops. Um, now they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Funko Pops, yeah, the Funko Fusion video game uh, is a video game coming to, I think, all major platforms. Uh, in it, there's just this whole, you know, collection of different IP. Um, if you're familiar with like, the Lego games. Um, it kind of feels like a mashup game like that. Um, and it revealed the invincible title card uh, when it listed out all the other uh, IP, you know, such as Jurassic Park and Back to the Future and everything. Uh, this is due out September 13th. It's pretty, pretty soon. Uh, Pre-orders uh, get you a Walking Dead pack. Walking Dead is also in it. Um, they did confirm that it will be, in fact, the uh, Invincible and Omni-Man. Uh, they confirmed that in a Skybound article. So, yeah, I think this, uh, if you guys watched the trailer or anything about, you know, you know, there was also like a review, uh, a couple early impression reviews written up. And it seems like it's just one of those like collect-a-thon, run through, you know, story kind of mm -hmm. things. Um, I don't know how much Invincible and Omni Man will be in this or how early into the game it is. But I think this is one of those things that would make for a very fun, just come over, hang out, let's make some you know, pizza pockets or whatever and stream this thing <laughs> until we get invincible. Uh, you know, yeah. we're an hour in Bill's just cursing us and asking how much longer. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it looks like it's a, like it'll be a fun time. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I'm curious to see if as we get closer, if they reveal more, if it'll just be invincible, um, invincible and Omni Man as like skins or if it will be like it seems like certain levels are tailored after like some of the IP. Like I could see them doing kind of similarly to what Fortnite has done with the whole like Doc Seismic thing or something along those lines within the game. Yeah. Cool. Like I remember in the trailer, you see, I want to say like the 
you know, the clock tower or not the clock tower or whatever, but the, the, the main town square for back to the future and everything like are we going to go into an invincible themed level is that what you're saying like that would be really cool yeah like not only is it like oh we're running around it with a costume like we're actually doing things invincible themed things yeah yeah fight some flaxons you know aren't there like billions of funko pops like for uh, there's a starship trooper funko pop back there so there could be starship troopers in this game (laughs) are there what did that sound like? Are there are, are there, are there dinosaurs um, on this on this dinosaur tour? Yeah, <laughs> Jurassic Park, bringing it back. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I don't know if that uh, what was announced is everything that's in it, or if they're holding back some of them, and you know, or how many are in this thing. But we'll see as it gets closer. Yeah. So, hmm. um, so that does it for all the latest Invincible news. Um, right now we're gonna go on to a couple more emails. Uh, remember, you can email us at theinvinciblepodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, you can also find us at theinvinciblepodcast.com. We try and keep all the episodes listed there, um, as well as a contact form and everything. Um, there's a handful of emails we can get to this ta- uh, this week, but um, we do see them. There's some emails already about our upcoming episode title episode where we are going to try and predict some of the titles for the season three uh um titles you know obviously if you didn't know this the the titles for each episode of invincible are pulled directly from the comic and we want to read through as far as we think season three will go and kind of give our guesses to what will be in there some of you have already sent your guesses in please keep sending them in we'll save them for a segment of the show um, and we'll give our own. That's probably going to be in a couple months or so when we do that episode. We have a couple other episodes that, uh, that we want to do before that. Um, but in the meantime, Wyatt, take it away with our first email. All right. So uh, this one reads, uh, hi, guys. Firstly, I'd like to say congrats. Kanye West, Sam Raimi, Guillermo del Toro, and Mel Gibson are all listeners. I knew the podcast was popping off, but wow, that's incredible. (laughs) In all seriousness, you guys are killing it. Keep it up. Uh, I know you have some really cool episodes lined up, but I'd love to know what you all think of Void Rivals and any of the other Energon Universe books. If you're reading them, I'm loving them all, but Transformers and Void Rivals are definitely my favorite too. Much love. Frank S. So, you know, Sinatra, possibly. Oh, Who knows? S is actually his middle, S is his middle initial. He didn't want to put Miller, but it's got guys. It's Frank oh. Miller. <laughs> the <laughs> Frank Miller. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know that very possible um, to his question about void rivals and Energon universe. I know not all of us, I think, are caught up on all of that stuff. I have caught up on void rivals for sure. I read up through all of the Daniel Warren Johnson artwork Transformers ones, because I know they switched artists recently. I haven't caught up through the newer arc. I think that they started with the new artist, but loved the Transformers book. Like, can't believe how much I loved it. Um, it's really, really great. Void Rivals is incredible. Like, it's it's become one of the few comics that is, like, currently coming out right now that I am actively, like, finding myself every now and then being like, man, when's the next issue coming out? And then I go to look it up. I'm like, oh, it's like two more weeks. Okay, yeah. I can wait. Like, I And then I'm like counting down the days to that and excited to read it on the Wednesday that it comes out because it's been that good. I, I'm loving Void Rivals. I can't wait for all of us to get caught up on it because I'm sure we will do an eventual other stuff show uh, like we've done in the past where we kind of catch up on movies and video games and TV shows and, and non-invincible stuff to to go over our thoughts on but yeah void rivals is great yeah i caught up on void rivals a few weeks ago um because i was a couple issues behind and it you're right it was incredible but at that point that was the end of the arc um and i'm yeah. pretty sure the first issue of the next arc cam- came out um yes. but where that yeah. arc ends with an introduction of a new character was so good and i am yeah. very excited uh to read more i'm eager yeah. to get caught up and then I'm eager to get caught up and then if you've ever read anything daniel warren johnson i mean his his, I mean his his run on Transformers, at least those first whatever six or so issues, is just incredible. Like he it has yeah. he has no right making <laughs> Transformers <laughs> so emotional and so human. Like it is, yeah, just, yeah. He's so he's so good. He's so good. Ah, uh, yeah. I just got my um, trade paperback of Murder Falcon because uh, Skybound was doing a crazy like one dollar sale on a bunch of books, and I grabbed like. Nice hardcover oblivion song volume three murder falcon and a bunch of firepower for like a dollar each and I did the uh, same thing 
Did you grab? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Wyatt, you still haven't read Murder Falcon, right? No, I've read like the first two issues a while back. And then it was okay. like, it was on the tablet on the way to C2E2. And then I watched a million other things and stuff like that. But I need to read Murder you Falcon. Need- Same thing, Wyatt. I, I, I gave it like a, a, you know, a really solid effort and I just couldn't get into it. Maybe I'll try it again. You know, there are some people that have said the same thing about Invincible. Yeah. Mm. Mm. True. You got to, I get it though. You got to be in the right mood for you, stuff though. You but do. do. I did read all of in like one sitting, do a power bomb, which is, I like, still have to read more recently. Mm-hmm. I got to read is, that one too. It's one of the best, like just single trade ba- paperbacks I've ever read. I was like, Dude, his beta ray bill. Story. Like I, he is so yeah. far, I think the only person that, makes me tear up reading comics and he's done it multiple times it's wow insane. it is insane everything yeah. in you... a comic book called murder falcon bill the other <laughs> one's called do a power bomb and then the other one's called transformers and all three of them I, like, <laughs> yeah. even in the first issue of like murder falcon i remember feeling like oh wow this is gonna hit me more emotionally than i was just expecting from a murder falcon book yeah one of you also read dead earth which one? Oh. Oh, I did. Dude, I you yeah, would it. that was him too. Dude. Again, yeah, fantastic. Wonder Woman Dead Earth was incredible. And it's like, oh man, what he does with like DC, like in the future and like Desolate Earth, or, like I so read. good. So I fucking yeah. good. Maybe I maybe I did read that. I've been I telling you, you to read me, it. I think you I think you made me read that to you. No, Dan. I it's think I think you didn't it? read it because I told you to read it, and that's how that works. To where, like, I'll tell you to do something, pretty, and then I'm you just sure like, I won't do something. I'm, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I. Am. I think I gave TJ. You have my copy of Beta Ray Bill, right? Uh, I, you probably lent it to someone else. Yeah, and you'll never see it again. <laughs> and I'll never Dana, see it again. <laughs> Dana's mom has it. He didn't. He Get didn't even read her. it. He like literally <laughs> waited for you to leave, and then he fucking handed it to somebody else out of spite. That's 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 a. That's a a joke that we made off air previously but yes uh yeah tj i think you do have my copy of it and you did read it and there's like also yeah. very emotional and it was like, very good the, yeah. the hook references in that one come on uh so yeah. good oh so this has that. been the daniel warren johnson cast um thank you all for listening yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a good section i'm sure of our other stuff oh show once we eventually do that uh hopefully soon because there's too much to talk about yeah um tj you have the next email if you could take that oh i do yeah uh this one is from jack he says hi guys first off wanted to say loved season two can't wait for season three since the release of season two i've had many close friends start to read invincible slash collect it physically and i never know which is the best way for people to get into the comics what would be the best format to do so i started with the trade paperbacks Anyways, keep doing what you're doing and take care. Jack, Mr. Uh, Jack Nicholson, to be um, is who that is. Um, I'm going to say, though, my I. I, Ryan, I know what you're going to say for sure, but those new new trade like mini trade paperbacks with like the Corey Walker uh, that those are so I, I love just holding it in my hand and like flipping through. Love it. Yeah. It's it's so like compact too. like just take it with you and just read it like in the car if you're waiting for like it's yeah. so cool. I love those. I think the right answer the only is the hardcovers. Right, Ryan? Yeah, that's right. what Ryan so you, would say. The yeah. hardcovers are I mean the right the, the answer is what's your budget? I mean really it's what's your yeah. budget because if you're trying to get as much as you can for as cheap as you can, the compendiums you just cannot beat the price for those especially when they yeah. go on sale. You yeah. can usually find you, you can find the compendium sometimes for like 30 40 bucks or something like that and three of those and you're done you've got them all and now that they have those are less digestible though especially when you're trying to get somebody else into it like it's much easier to hand somebody a hardcover and then as soon as they finish it they're like where's the next one yes whereas you hand somebody a fucking compendium that's like a dictionary apart from the the library collections which are incredible but very expensive the hardcovers are the most expensive route to go so it yeah. is worth it. I do prefer it. It is the perfect size and having all the back matter in the back is incredible. Like that is easily the the way I, I think it. And you know, I want to say Robert Kirkman, Kirkman has talked about it in the past, but like so many of the stories, the storylines and arcs fit well into the hardcover um, format. Like yeah. when I think about what happens in certain arcs, I think of it in that 
volume of the hardcover. Um, whereas yeah. a lot of time in the trade paperbacks, that arc spans two or even three um, trade paperbacks. So it becomes a little less clear and it's just easier. So especially if you're taking your time buying them, getting one hardcover and feeling a little bit more like this is where this arc ends for now. And then getting to, you know, read all the back matter in between. Like, I don't know. That's what I think. I, I agree that I think the hardcovers are my favorite way to read it. I feel like the hardcovers are like watching a movie in IMAX. And it's like, you know, it's going to it's going to cost a little more, but you're getting that oversized look at everything. It's like the premium format. But like if I'm trying to get you to watch a movie I really like or a show I really like and you tell me you're going to watch it on your phone. Cool. Watch it on your phone if that's yeah. how you want to watch it. Like, I don't really care. So I think the the answer to like what's the best way is whatever is best for that person. Like if it's easiest for them to download the Kindle app or Comixology used to be Comixology and, you know, go through a few of them that way. Cool. Like I, I think however you want to engage with the story, obviously if they're making it available in those different formats, they're, they're the creators and everybody are welcoming you to, to kind of come at it however you want to. When I reread Invincible, it is always through digital always really? it just like mm -hmm. flows so easily wow. and it 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 i think it captures moments better it doesn't spoil what's on the page because i never see the page beforehand i just go panel to panel mm -hmm. and then show the full page when that page is through i think i love reading it that way because it doesn't spoil stuff like think of like batman hush where it, like you flip the page and you're oh, like oh well, i see it right there it's like i don't know i love that too so yeah there's like we said many times there's no wrong way mm -hmm. so to each yeah. his own yeah, mm. you All right. you did say something a minute ago, and I had a, and I was gonna say, what swiping swiping through digital? Oh, when I reread, a lot of the time the compendiums aren't. All right, so when I reread, I'm using the hardcovers, but the compendiums are what I use for like reference. If I'm yeah. planning, like mm. if I'm looking for sense. stuff, which is great for if you have. You know, if you're really into Invincible, you've read it a couple of times, maybe you've read it digitally or something like that. Getting the compendiums, especially on sale, are great for just like, you know, I'm going to sit down and flip through a whole bunch of stuff instead of pulling out all the different hardcovers and looking for something. So the compendiums also have that, you know, in their corner. I want I, I need somebody to read it on Apple Vision Pro and tell me what that's like. Just so I know what what it's like to just have the pages floating in the room in front of you and just be like swipe your head <laughs> or whatever you do to control that. That would be very fun. I just I somebody sent, do that and write it. I sent you guys the picture. I did I did uh do a demo of one of those at the Apple store the yeah. other day just for the hell of it. I'm not I have no interest in buying one. But I was like, ah, I'm gonna try this thing just to see what it's like. I should have done that. I should have been like, You you got the uh the Amazon Prime app on here? Lot. Yeah, and just yeah, like uh -huh. <laughs> watch invincible was it cool just really quick was it cool yeah it was or was it it's cool okay it's cool like you know like the first time you try vr is cool like it's like yeah this is really yeah. cool and then you know you get a little motion sick and you're like i'm done i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go to scott's house and try it <laughs> scott can buy it <laughs> this is rich um all right bill you have the next one i have one mm -hmm. i do have one from uh hello the invincible podcast it's sam here not Sam Raimi, no. but please keep giving me famous last names. Oh, this is, uh, is this Sam Smith? Is it Sam this Jackson? Sam Stay when he... with me. Yeah. Wow. Won't you? Uh, my question <laughs> for you all is what got you slash when did you get introduced to Invincible? Um, we talk about that a lot, but we can do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, did one of you start it and told the others? Did the did you guys start the comic before the Omni-Man reveal? Um, for me, I was introduced to Invincible from a trailer reaction from Kind of Funny, and after the first three episodes, I looked up everything, every podcast talking about it. Eventually, I found you guys, and you kept recommending the comics. So after the Battle Beast episode, I ended up reading one all <laughs> 144 issues before the season one finale. Wow, that escalated rather that quickly. Did. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it's a much different experience than you guys had reading the story as it was being written. Uh, it was my first comic book and impossible oh, yeah. to put down. Wow. Awesome. What a great story. Right. What I feel so story. bad because it's all downhill from there. You know? <laughs> You're never going to get that experience mm -hmm. again. So uh, well, shout out to uh, oh, one moment, TJ, if you would <laughs> um, <laughs> shout out to final days from Michael Kwanuka. 
Kiwanuka. Is that a song? Yeah. Show? Yes. Uh, which has been stuck in my head since the finale and my inspiration for this week's doodle. Uh, I'm going to try and keep doing since it was so fun during the season. Still tracing, though. Best Sam Jackson. I was literally going to say Samuel Jackson. Uh, yeah. When you finished. It. He likes to sign emails as Sam, though, because he doesn't like it's yeah. too long. Samuel, it's too formal. Mm-hmm. Did you yeah. send us this doodle? I just did just now. Oh, wow. I forgot until you said it. Nice. Hey, very good. I love that shot good of Mark job. in the show He's, too, and the, yeah. it's very cool. Sam pose. did say still tracing though, but yeah, that's still that's still pretty yeah. cool. Oh, great! Yeah, that is a cool pose. Um, so yeah, that that song is the song that's playing when he's like like freaking out and flying and all the effects going across his goggles mm-hmm. and everything. Oh, okay, okay. Why? Yeah. Did you know that that song samples the sound of the Russian cosmonaut? that was launched into space and no. it was the transmission of him basically dying and like f- crashing to earth. Like that's amazing. during the original, like uh, that's kit- amazing. Why so, amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing thing that the song samples that for a song called final days as well. Like and for, that's and, very cool. And so why I, I, I call you out because we, we, we were watching uh, 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 for all mankind. Yeah. And so yeah. like thinking about that versus what, Mark's going through and everything like that, and like taking that, you know, like yeah. I, don't, I, I, I haven't looked into it further, like what the translations were, or, or you know, like what the cosmonaut was saying and everything like that. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty that's intense, really cool. and I'm sure that that had to have factored into the decision to choose that song for that scene. Yeah, and that song is uh, of all of the new music in season two. That one in particular is so good. It's such a like that's out of the the playlist of new songs. That is one that I've gone back to and listened to a bunch. I've just never really looked up the the I guess trivia behind it, which is really cool. Which I feel like that's add it to the list, Ryan. We could like rank Duh, the songs think... from uh, season two as well, oh, or give shout outs to that. I know we did that for ones. season one of giving our like top five. That I'm sure we could even do that because there's so many good Track. good songs in mm-hmm. season two. Soundtrack ranking. It is on. The docket. We still have to rank this season three, or uh, or all the episodes, and we've got yeah, we've got plenty of stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, he asked um how yeah. we got into it. So I was so, going to mention right. that. Yeah. The short story is the... Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, TJ. Maybe leave out the duh though. You don't have to do that again. Hmm. Uh, Bill picked up The Walking Dead. Um, we all like The Walking Dead, and then I wanted something new, so I went in and found Invincible, and fell in love with that. And I caught up on that. Uh, the first issue that went that was live, or the next issue that came out after I caught up was Forty One. That gives you context. Um, and I begged Ryan and Bill to read it for about a year, maybe longer. Um, it's probably less. I don't think so. There were a lot of delays back then. Your first issue was no, what, 48? Was Ryan's 40. first issue was 48. No, the first issue I bought was, was 48. 48. I, think. I definitely read it before that. Like 50. It, it was it was right around there. Yeah. Which which the most ironic thing is like Ryan I mean look I, both of you guys are obviously huge. We're all huge fans, but you wouldn't expect it to switch like with with the amount of love that TJ had for this thing in the very beginning before anybody in the fucking world <laughs> knew about it, like we have listeners is, that have is, written in that have been like with the comic since issue one. Um, yeah, we were definitely a few yeah. ish- episode or a few issues in. It was just crazy that it took us years to start the mm-hmm. podcast because around that time, and I don't know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing, Sam, you don't know this. Um, but around the time that we were reading Invincible for the first time, we were listening to a podcast called Podcast Beyond, which was a show on IGN that Greg Miller hosted and was a part of. Greg Miller, who later left IGN and started kind of funny with his friends, um, who has been an inspiration for us and why we got into podcasts and why we decided to start doing a podcast about this thing that we were passionate about. And you know, later years later, had Greg on the show and everything like that. So the fact that you found uh, Invincible and our podcast essentially through Kind of Funny is just one of those things that is just, you know, 
so cool kind of funny. and just in, incredible. Like that, that, that is a thing that someone just sent us an email about. Um, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So yeah, that's how we found it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's it on that, the main topic, that right? That does it. That does it for all of our emails. Remember you can email us at the invincible podcast at gmail.com. Um, so we recently went to, I mean, we, uh, we had to delay this episode. We were going to talk shortly after. So we're going to kind of just chat a bit here about our trip to C2E2. Um, you know, this, uh, kind of came pretty quick. I, I know that both Wyatt and Bill were, you know, got tickets as surprises. So I feel, I feel like we had like two weeks to talk about it and prepare for this. Um, yeah. but it was a lot of fun. I mean, where do you guys want to start? Um, oh man, we're just going uh, through everything that happened. Just talk about whatever. I mean, we got to so Chicago we, and the first day it was cool because, you know, the three of us before Wyatt arrived, got to walk around the city, which was a ton of fun. So we got to hit up all the usual spots, got to see a lot of the, you know, Chicago sites, um, eat a like lot of polar we bears, the free, you know, we went to the free zoo. <laughs> We went to the zoo and you literally just walk in. No one's there to hand you a ticket or stamp your hand. You just walk in like you own the like a park. you own the bitch. And there yeah. was only like maybe fifty percent of the animals that were out and that you could see, but the other fifty percent that we did see were incredible. So it makes me like yeah. wonder like what we could have seen if all the animals that are out were out and everything. And like again, completely free. Only about only saw about fifty percent of it and still like better than the buffalo zoo i can guarantee you that like oh yeah it was not yep. yeah 100 times better super sweet so we did all that that was pretty fun and then we were like well let's go to the bear let's go to mr beef uh, is that what it's called mr beef i think yeah. right yeah or the the beef the beef no. the beef the beef yeah the original um beef. yeah yeah the original yeah so um which is what the bear is based off of so we get in this uber and we're driving to it all excited to eat at this place and the uber fucking pulls right up to the front of it and we get out like a bunch of fucking idiots and we're just like oh and we walk up and there's a security guard he's like oh it's closed until like the third or next tuesday or something I think like it was a like, oh, what's going on it was, yeah it and they're like oh they're yeah. filming and everybody was like shh, shh, like shushing everyone and they were literally filming if you guys remember in the scene that they're cooking outside of the building because they lost power and gas and stuff mm -hmm. um that's there and they were filming the episode or like a new episode for season three. So then we like walked back out and they had the entire block like barricaded off. Yeah. So I don't know how the Uber we, got like, that close. Yeah. The, the fact that the Uber just pulled up and we get out like stupid idiots, like, you know, and, and it was just, crazy. they were like, is this like, Jeremy Allen White's coffee that's being delivered here? It's just you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was, that was, that was pretty fun. So as much as it would have been cool to eat there, it was also cool to be like, Oh, Shit, they're filming. Yeah. That's that's actually pretty cool. We obviously yeah, didn't yeah. see anything. They had tarps up and everything, and then the cameras yeah. were like through the tarps. But, um, but yeah, it was still pretty cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. got to walk around some more, um, get some other food. Went to Portillo's. Yeah, um, walked a lot, which is not the thing you want to do the very first day of a convention weekend. But <laughs> it wasn't too bad. We survived. Um, other than that, I mean, just getting to go to the convention, we've talked before when we like talk about our favorite conventions and what's, you know, great about New York versus San Diego versus Chicago. And it holds true that Chicago is just the most chill, um, packed with artist convention that there is. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was great, you know, got to say hi to Ryan Otley again, see how he was doing, take an awesome photo, which I'll try and insert right mm -hmm. here of us, uh, you know, recreating the scene from season two. Um, of course, meeting Jason Howard, you know, and uh, a ton of other artists and get, you know, TJ getting commissions, us all getting, you know, you know, artwork. And um, one of the best things, of course, was meeting listeners and uh, of the podcast, inclu including Christopher Marchman, who uh, it was cool. We actually approached Kyle Higgins table because, you know, we were there to hang out with a lot with Kyle Higgins and um, I did the massive verse panel. Um, but at one point we were going up to Kyle's ta table and he's like holding up this really cool, you know, full page uh, of um, Radiant Black and Invincible fighting conquest. And okay. I'll, I'll put it up too. And, um, and, you know, 
Kyle holds it up. He's like, check this out. And it was really cool. And uh, Christopher was standing there giving Kyle the original to this artwork. And Christopher was like, oh, oh, hey, guys. Like, he knew who we were because he yeah. listens to the podcast. And he said that he drew this while listening to the Invincible podcast, which was just... So it's, it's funnier from, like, I think it was you and TJ were already at the table yeah. and me and Wyatt weren't. So when yeah. me and Wyatt walked up and you guys were mid conversation and he was like, Oh my God. Yeah. Bill and Wyatt and this and, and I'm like, what is going on right now? And, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then I got the story like as, but it was just, it's, we met a lot of fans like more than I ever thought listeners. we would. It's List, it, listeners. Yeah. Listen, it's, they're fans. We're all fans they're of minutes. Listen, together. if you listen, you're a fan. Right. And, and we appreciate it. But what I was going to say is that it's like, for as cool as it as it seemed like it was for some of these people to meet us, it was cooler for us to meet them a hundred yeah. times over, guys. Yeah. Like so it's super humbling. It makes Bill, and Bill have it, you not learned how what? go ahead, TJ. I'll let you finish. It just <laughs> it we're not that cool. So it's weird to see people excited to see us. It's it's weird. I love it though. Like obviously we like that. Like it, yeah. like, like Bill said, it's humbling. Um, and it just makes us feel so much cooler than we are. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was really cool. We had two instances of, uh, you know, people like very excited to see us. And then there were a lot of other people that just knew of us. Or actually we had more than, more than two, um, yeah. people that just excited to see us and like knew who we were and, and called out references from the podcast and stuff. It's, it's always yeah. awesome to, to, to see. Well, the best one the the best one was um i i so wyatt had a an invincible shirt on and i had a dinosaur shirt on and, and whenever someone would be like oh hey cool t-shirt i'd say well have you read the comics or just the show if they said we read the comics too i'd ask them who do you like more rexplode or dinosaurus mm -hmm. and i lost every single fucking time <laughs> and i i kind of expected to and you I, just I really kept did. going to bat for it too i know we like Bill, I, I know rexplode just had his season it's not gonna turn out yeah, good I, and I every know. time you're like no i'm gonna try i'm gonna try. i was just expecting it so then again this is the funniest like moment of like meeting a fan is that i we were talking to these guys and and then TJ said something. And I was like, fuck you, TJ. And then he was like, wait, are you guys the Invincible Podcast? <laughs> and and it was the fuck you, TJ, that, that, That's what that it. sparked it. Yeah, it yeah was, the catchphrase really of the podcast, clearly, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I got to tell the story. I mean, after, you know, this uh, initial, I think it was the first full day of, you know, meeting a ton of, uh, of cool people and, uh, you know, our heads getting a little big from, you know, being recognized and it being pretty cool, you know, uh, we, uh, we go to leave and it's pouring out. And so we need to, you know, get a Uber to the hotel. Oh, this story. And so we go to get an Uber to the hotel and all the Ubers are like super expensive because they're surge pricing. And so it was actually cheaper to get the like Uber black or whatever it was, the like fancy version, luxury, right? Yeah, a luxury, a luxury vehicle. So we're like, it's cheaper. Why not just do it? So we did it. So this huge, you know, uh, Lincoln Navigator, uh, like totally decked out, it. rolls rolls up. You know, we get in, and after a day of being recognized, we get into our luxury <laughs> SUV, <laughs> nicest vehicle I have By ever far. sat into. By like, far, it felt like I was in a John Wick movie, <laughs> and like this was like the mob boss's convoy. Right? You know what I mean? Totally. Like, extra rich people so like you know we're feeling pretty good we get back to the hotel um and then you know we later go on to do a couple other things meet up uh uh go to a, a really fun jazz show go meet up uh with uh kyle higgins and some friends at uh at the bar and then we go to leave the bar and you know after a really fun day we get into our you know our uber to go back to the hotel and bill's like you know what guys our life is pretty cool it's pretty great, you know, and the and peak then, of our hubris the here. Peak. <laughs> and it, not five seconds later are, are the giant headlights of a big black SUV coming straight at us, going the Down wrong the direction way. on a one way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it swerves inches before it hits us. Um, yeah. Not just not just traveling down the road, but going like forty miles per hour with no sign of and, slowing, 
and our o- Uber driver slammed on the brakes and stopped. And this guy was yeah. still coming directly at us. And guys and and g- gals, when we say this this thing missed us by that much, it was like bu- inch to the bumper. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Going 30 miles per hour almost. Killed Bill, us. you saw you, know you how... were sitting in the back looking straight ahead. So you made a sound. Oh, I saw it right away. I, yeah. I, said, um, the, the, I looked... the back seat was me, Bill in the middle, and TJ on the other side. So I'm like squished into the back of this car. I can't really see anything, but I just feel us stopping and I hear Bill going, uh, uh, guys, guys. <laughs> like, so when you sit... and I'm like, what's, what's happening right now? When you sit in the back seat of a car, Everything looks closer. That's why you have like bad yeah. backseat drivers and everyone thinks that you're like closer and you're going to hit some. Like he was so close. I thought we were dead. It was over. Like that was it. That's it I had, insane. I, I, we, and we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it. I had come to, I was thinking of scenarios of what to do with my body as it flew through the windshield. <laughs> that is how certain I was. Because you would have. You were just right in the middle yeah, I, I was like, well, I, this is, yeah. I mean, I'm not buckled up, so I'll just like go loosey goosey. I don't know how I'm <laughs> going to survive this, but yeah, it was. So that's, so, so it was cool seeing a lot of fans and listeners and everything like that, but you know, it's not a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. It doesn't come, it doesn't go to our heads at all. We're not gonna, you know, but uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. Um, we got to see a lot of really great cosplay too. One incredible, like beat up looking yeah. invincible that that one was stunning. Um, so good. I saw a black and blue, a black and blue mark. That was the first black yeah. and blue mark I had ever seen in person. Um, you know, a couple Adam Eves, uh, Bill Wyatt, and uh, and I saw an Invincible who had like it was. I think it was one of the best ones I've ever seen, where the material was like cloth, and it was just put together and knitted so well together. Like everything looked great. Yeah, he he did the whole thing. I mean, all the cosplays were awesome. Like seeing any of them were great, but but this guy. He didn't just buy a bodysuit. Oh, yeah. He literally stitched the fabric over pads. I think at one point I was like, can I touch it? And it was his actual like body yeah. under underneath of it. Yeah. And, and it was yeah. like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, but he had like, he had like a, he had made a, he 3d printed like part of the mask to be hard. Oh yeah. Um, so it actually stayed like how, up uh, over his nose. Spider-Man cosplayers will do the face shell underneath oh, right. to like give it that Spider-Man shape. He yeah. had the like piece underneath to really give yeah because a lot of it like it's just tight cloth like a nylon that's stuck to the face like trying to stay on this was like formed to his face but in a way that looked like it wasn't like it was sticking out and really thick it was it was a little bit but it was a little bit thicker than you would see fabric but it looked like oh okay this is close this is close to what live action could be nice yeah very cool yeah and uh i got a lot of commissions um dude you have Wyatt got I yeah, got my I, very first commission from uh, Christopher Marchman. Like that was such yeah. a cool experience getting to meet him, hearing him talk about, um, yeah. you know, drawing that invincible radiant black conquest piece while listening to the podcast felt so special. Like it felt like such a cool thing. Yeah. And then TJ immediately got a commission and was just seeing not only how like great his prices were, but how great of an artist he was. I got a, uh, you know, young Omni man, Oliver, which was very cool to get my first you know, convention commission. Really. Yeah. 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 I got, you, um, he did your, uh, both TJ and Bill got something from Jason Howard, which is probably one of my favorite commissions you both own. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. got, so it. I got, he, he got me, uh, a tech jacket, which is awesome. Uh, and I got, TJ. and I got uh, a battle beast because I mean, he did astounding wolf man. So I wanted to see his battle beast. And I, we said that like, I feel like it should be a cover. It's, I yeah. want to get it colored, um, like digitally colored, like a, a color commission from someone. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. It was funny because we were like talking about it, like, oh, what is it going to look like? It's going to look like the Elder Brood and like, you know, and then and then I think one of us were like, oh, you know, the, the main difference between Wolfman and Battle Beast is the snout. snout. Yeah. And, yeah. and the snout's this. a little bit longer. We were doing the snout thing. And then we went to go pick up your commission, TJ. Jason Howard was like, you know... I do Wolfman, and this is pretty similar. He's like, but then I, I realized that it's the difference of the snout. And we yeah, were like, we said the up. same thing. Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. snout. This yeah, thing. He, yeah. yeah, he brought it up without us having to bring it up. Yeah. 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 Jason Howard is great. We met his son. He brought his son. His son is like yeah. eight foot ten. I'm not kidding. <laughs> He's a giant. He's a giant. I don't think I was person. there for that. 
Uh, yeah, he was walking around with them. Oh, like, okay. Like, when you were when yeah. you were busy, but uh, I also got a he was uh, talking meeting Marcelo. Dude, What's yeah. That? Oh yeah, meeting me, meeting Marcelo. Um, Costa. From, oh yeah. Yeah, from uh, Radiant Black. This was so much fun, guys. Like he yeah. speaks such little English, but is very much like us. So trying to like talk about things that we like whilst not understanding a word that we're saying was probably the funnest part for me. Um, yeah. But I got a xenomorph from him because um, Eduardo, uh, who also illustrates for Radiant Black, did a xenomorph for me last C2E2. And now it's ignited this desire to get just Xenomorph mm -hmm. commissions from a bunch of artists from C2E2 right. or from anywhere. It was great. Yeah. Uh, I got a an Invincible from Eduardo when I saw him last. So I had to get an Invincible from Marcelo this time and he crushed it. He did. Uh, from Chris Marchman, I got an Alien the Alien, which was fucking phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And then um, after that, he like mentioned Rexplode because he knows I love Rexplode. And I was like, oh, let's do it. Let's do a Rexplode. So he made a Rexplode for me as well. Like, and it, Ryan, you can throw all these awesome. up here going. Yeah, he's going like, all he's over the place, right? Up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Put them all up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I, I, and I, of course, continued my sketch card collection with, with a handful yeah. more of really awesome sketch cards. Probably my favorite batch of sketch cards yet. You know, getting one from Marcello and mm -hmm. Stefani Simeone and Rod Reese has been, oh, there's so many good ones. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun, you know. Uh, so C2E2, another one in the books, still stands as one of the just best conventions, the most stress-free, just chill conventions. Yeah. You know, San Diego is Except just- the time we almost died. Except that time we almost died, which, you know. <laughs> but it's a fun story, right? We yeah, brought that on our story. I'm not putting that on C2E2. Agreed. Agreed. That was totally I, I on agree. us. I will say it was. it's the first time I ever had uh, real deep, t deep dish pizza. Cause it's always just, I've never been interested. Cause it's just, it looks like cake. I've had it before here. Like, and it is, it's just like a bunch of meat and like sauce and it's not good. You got to eat it with a fork. It was awesome. Like legit Chicago yeah. style, like yeah. deep dish pizza. Yeah. It was huge and it was thick as it's supposed to be. But when you, when I picked it up, it was completely flat. No flop, no flop. Yeah. No flop. Great. That was care. the funnest. That was fun too. Like, we had gotten pizza. They ordered a thin crust first, and then the deep dish came. And I, I sliced a piece, and TJ had already started eating the deep dish. And I remember on my plate, I had my fork and knife, and TJ's to my left. He's like, Bill, pick it up. <laughs> pick it up, Bill. And I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? He was so serious. And then I picked it up, and I was like, oh, my God. I couldn't believe that, to your point, no flop. It was crazy how this – how I, and I hate Italian food. I hate it. I hate it so much. And I had like almost an entire pizza by myself. It was, it was so really good. good. I crave it a lot. Ever since. Yeah. 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 I can't believe you hate Italian food. I hate it's crazy. It. I hate sauce. I don't like red sauce. It gives me heartburn. I don't really like tomatoes. Yeah. Mm, that's that's why. I get and it. Then also, and then also hanging out with Kyle Higgins throughout the weekend. He always makes it a blast. You know, so yeah, big thanks oh, yeah. to him. Yeah, that that whole deep dish pizza adventure was one of the last things that that we all kind of did together before uh, I flew back um, on Sunday, and that was with like the whole Radiant Black team and everything. And mm -hmm. yeah, every getting to hang out with all of them, and like you said, Bill, hanging out with Marcelo was such a fun time. Like even outside the convention, and and not even having to do with any of the comic stuff was just cool to hang out with everybody. Yeah, and the Massiverse panel was a ton of fun announcing the yeah. Radiant Black hardcover, which like you guys should definitely pick up. It's really good. Uh, the the bits yeah. that we know about it in the back are awesome. Like uh, some really cool stuff. The Return of Cowl. Um, there's some good stuff coming, and you know, obviously all those series, uh, all the all the stuff from Black Market has been great. But um, so yeah. So that does it for C2E2. Uh, we had a blast. Can't wait to go to the next one. Um, San Diego is uh, not sure if any of us are going to that one. I might be going, unsure. But other than that, the four of us, you know, maybe if we can convince Wyatt to go, might make it to New York Comic Con. That that one is looking like uh, a likely one for at least three yeah. of us. We'll see. So that it, it's funny because. Um... It's, New York Comic Con is always in October, isn't it? Yeah, it's really tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, which is mine and Liz's, my wife's anniversary. We got married in October. And I was like, okay, well, 
if it's close to our anniversary date, I might not be able to to make it work. And and maybe if we do, and then we look it up, and it's literally the day our fu- the the nineteenth <laughs> is like that Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're well, I'm hoping that we uh, go and kind of make it like an anniversary thing, like not just yeah. a con, but I would really love to you know take her and have her experience because we're kind of fucking famous now. So she's like <laughs> she can be there and be the arm candy. And- you know, and also if not, if Liz candy. is going. Nicole, Nicole and, should fucking Nicole go. Nicole and Liz are like best friends now. So and in New York City, also, where they can be like that, so bougie and, yeah. and like fucking. If I say that Liz is coming, the chances of me going probably increase. <laughs> not only, not okay. only that, but Bill, you said that Liz would be the arm candy. Yeah, you would be the arm you candy. Everyone the arm candy. loves. <laughs> everyone loves the new readers. And li- they would be. Oh my god! I yes. just fucking thought about that. Yeah. Could god you imagine, Bill? No. You being excited to like meet a listener and then be like holding it's her the new fucking, readers and hold, just push holding you her aside. purse, <laughs> holding her purse like, fuck. god damn it! Yeah, they hand oh, you the phone right. to take a picture of. Yeah, of the yeah. Two of them. Can, can you take a picture <laughs> of us? So right. Oh, <laughs> you're so right. That would fucking happen. That would be not incredible. a doubt in my mind. That would be incredible. Oh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know. October of this year, New York Comic Con. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing what, uh, what if anything comes out of San Diego. You know, uh, season two didn't end too long ago, so not really expecting. It's probably too early to be given. We'll get a teaser predi- trailer. predictions on what we see. Actually, no. With yeah. the release date for Q4. Yeah, we just year. talked about a convention right now. Any, uh, any, any? We, are we seeing anything? Bill just answered regarding season three. I think at I think San Diego Comic Con. I think if we get something, it's no more than the like Alan and Mark at Burger Mart talking to each other, kind of cheeky. Something's coming, and here's a vague window of when it's coming, but we'll see you later. That type of thing. The only thing, but I think probably not. The only thing that we will get at San Diego Comic Con regarding season three is voice casting. Ooh, that would be that's cool. actually spot on, man. I think yeah. you're. Why not? I think I can, why can't it be both? I think it's it could going. be. No, TJ, I agree. I think it's more likely to get voice casting than a, a, a trailer type thing. But I am kind of with Wyatt. But maybe even less. Maybe just like title card, you know, a voiceover and like fall twenty twenty five or whatever, and like that's it. We don't even see like visuals. Just fall of twenty twenty five. Why would you even put that out there, Ryan? I'm sorry, not fall, spring. I'm. I've been spring. saying March. I meant, oh. I meant spring. You know I, what I, happens when we say things. They happen. I, I they felt come like, true. I felt like when Ryan said that, I felt like Ryan was doing it just to get a rise out of you because I knew you no, were going to freak out. No, no. I meant spring. Uh, yeah. All Winter right. of 2024 is what you meant to say. Yeah. And Bill, you think a teaser trailer? I can't wait to be right, guys. I can't wait to blow everyone away. All right. I point. won't be upset. You know, if you're yeah, right, please. I'll be happy. There's going to be uh, other invincible stuff. Like, it's not just going to be... I hope. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think it'd be great. Keep the keep it rolling. You know, and uh, Robert Kirkman did say <laughs> in our uh, interview with him that, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's more coming. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. Now time for the issue spotlight. Uh if you're new to the show, this is where we pull one of us, we take turns pulling a issue from the entire series of Invincible and talk about it. Um, we each, you know, take our turn and it's my turn to go next. We always kind of guess. I don't know if you guys want to guess. Take a crack at something. Uh, I think this is one that is pretty uh, fairly I like- me. This is a very me issue. Uh, I, I, I wasn't going too deep into this one. I was just like, you know what? I love this issue. This is a fun issue. I want to talk about this issue. So mm. might be a pretty quick one, but I think it's kind of cool. And there's some things that will tie into uh, things that are happening. And mm. right now, disclaimer, if you are listening, if you are watching, we didn't say it at the top, and we haven't spoiled too much as far as the comic goes. This is a spoiler. This happens well, post after. Season two. This happens post season two. So well, this not... is this is a spoiler. Um, it beware. Um, so yes. Uh, going forward, hmm. what do you guys think? Is Amber in in it? Great question. She is not. Oh, I like I, I like each of you asking it. a question. This is fun. Yeah. Do like the it's like twenty <laughs> questions. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> um, right. Why I'd ask a question? 
<laughs> does does any of the issue take place in the Flaxen dimension? No. Ooh, that's, that was that, a good that's one. A good chunk. That was a good yeah. one, yeah. Wyatt. That would have mm. narrowed it down for sure. Yeah, because I know Ryan likes the the Monster Girl Rex uh-huh. arc. Uh, I think uh, I was too. That was that that was up there. This this sounds like a super random one, but if I'm right, it's going to narrow it down to like three. Uh-huh. Okay, I think it is does. whoever's on the cover. Are they on more than one cover? Everyone is on more put than it this one way. cover. No, no, Invincible's on the cover. Some that are okay. So there, I'll put it that way. Invincible's on the the two Invincible. covers I was thinking of too. Way to fucking narrow. Way to narrow it down, TJ. Thanks uh, a whole it, lot. It wasn't bro. who I thought it was. Okay. Or, any other final? Dollars. Any other final? Uh, long shot. Uh, is is Rex bad in it at this point? Yes. Ooh. Hmm. Why go again? Is it? We got We got to narrow it, it down. Is it? Oh, is it? Uh, I'm just gonna guess. Is it? Is it? I think it's one o nine when he does the whole like stranding mark there. Close. One nineteen. Oh, Ooh. that's what it is. That's Which what it I is. Think there is what is you that where he decapitates? That's probably he yeah. Probably yeah. Oh, no, right? that was one eighteen. That's oh, what I was in thinking. One I think I was oh. thinking of 118. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm, I am reading it wrong. You are right. Why? It is 109. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's All right. I was, nice. Dude, you nailed nice. it. But to, it to be fair, I was thinking of what happens in 108, but I did say 109. Yes. So I'll take the win. I'll take Hell it. Oh, yeah. Good job. <laughs> yes. I am talking about 109. Uh, in nice. 108, uh, 108 ends with, I mean, Mark, you know, going to the uh to another dimension to chase down angstrom levy because mohawk mark kidnapped him essentially and took him there uh robot uh found a way to access that dimension mark and robot go there robot kills angstrom levy strands mark there after killing mohawk mark and then leaves and it ends with mark being like holy fuck and that is the end of a hardcover collection i think it's seven i mean nine end of hardcover nine ends with that and so the first issue of hardcover 10 is mark stranded after the events of that you know one of his best friends just betrayed him what is going on what is going on back home he's stranded in this dimension where the viltrumites rule and uh and he's trapped there angstrom's dead mohawk mark is dead these two huge characters in the comic at this oh point. doesn't he have to like tear his oh, hair out to like oh. Be like Moha. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the cover, him kneeling. I mean, remember, solicits go out months before. We probably saw this yeah. cover, if not months before, at least one month before. And it's Mark kneeling before the tank with Rudy in it, yeah. which is so badass. Such a cool cover. Really quick. Sorry, yeah. Ryan. This is one of my favorite memories that pop up on my Facebook all the time because we're old enough to like Facebook is cool for us. <laughs> and it was our friend Rob Ladinsky and he tagged us and he says, have you guys read this yet? And it was that issue. Really? Or it, was, it, one, it was 108. It yeah. was 108. And nice. it always pops up. I'm like, man, I love that. Like it, it's, and it was like 12 years old or something crazy. Not really, but this is what, it was an old memory. This was like, this was around the time, like, obviously we had been reading since 40 something together uh, and reading the monthly and being excited about conquest and everything like that. But other than conquest, this was an era when we were reading it, where we, this is when we would talk about it for hours. This is when yeah, we would yeah. sit down and just talk about it because then shortly after this was when we started talking about doing the podcast. So 109 opens up and it's just the chaos. You know, you see uh, all the blood and, you know, Angstrom's head and Mohawk Mark dead and Mark is trapped there. And General Krieg Mm -hmm. is pounding on the door saying, you know, why is this sealed? What's happening? And you see Mark quickly pull out his hair and switch the costumes and shove the like exploded head uh, of the other Mohawk Mark into his costume. Um, And, uh, you know, basically you know tell general krieg uh what are you doing i'm in the middle of something like um you know he's got a little piece of hair still on the yes, side he, that he didn't rip out yet yep <laughs> yeah um he uh you know krieg is like what happened mark is like oh the very people that you know provided my escape you know uh, uh came um killed him and tried to halt our progress one of them escaped with the technology so the whole point is mohawk mark is trying to 
figure out the technology to transfer to, to travel the, the, through all the different dimensions. Um, and so like Mark's like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go take care of this. You're in charge. I'll be back. And Krieg is like, uh, and Mark like goes full Mohawk Mark and is like, like shouting at him and everything to kind of like put on this performance. He leaves. We see that he was actually in the Pentagon, which is now like a Viltrumite Pentagon. Yeah. Um, you know, he flies away. He flies to the teen team base looking for robot who, where we see like the robot, uh, uh, costume <clears throat> Adam Eve Rexplode. Rudy in the tank shows up, you know, goes to, you know, attack him. And um, we find out that, uh, you know, because Rudy's like, how do you know I'm robot? How do you know it's me? Um, and he convinces him that he is from another dimension. Uh, Rudy talks about how you killed Eve, you killed everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, he convinces him that we need to go you know, work together to basically fix this problem, find a way to, um, you know, get me back home and, you know, find the research. So him and Rudy go back to the Pentagon. They sneak in essentially, well, not even sneak in. He goes in saying that Rudy is there to help, you know, further the progress uh, that they had started figuring out the, uh, the interdimensional travel. So they go through, they talk to Krieg um, and, uh, you know, it turns out that, um, you know, Rudy is able to download all the previous work they had. Um, and then Mark has a quiet moment with him where he's like, are you sure, are you sure I killed Eve? And he said, yes. Um, I saw it with my own eyes. The two of you had grown close, but you just weren't human. You didn't see the things the same way. Something was off, but there was little things, but we mostly ignored them. Uh, once your father enlisted you, you actually thought we would help to take over the planet and Eve actually considered it. But then once you killed Rex, you know, she always loved Rex, maybe not the same way she loved you, but once you killed Rex, there was no going back. And so, you know, we were like a family together and everything. Um, you know, Rudy talks about how it's hard seeing him like this. So days pass and Rudy brings up the fact that like, yep, we're going to be able to do this. I have the technology. It should take a little less than a year. And Mark's like, a, a year? Uh, that's not going to work. Um, and Rudy's like, well, that's not the only problem. Why should I help you? Like, right now, you're a good guy. You rule this planet. Um, why would I help you? Like, this is actually a position where I want to be in. Um, and so, uh, you know, Mark convinces him that, uh, you know, what is it? It's that... Uh, you mentioned and you're currently passing for the emperor of this set time. The only solution I can think of. Oh no, Mark has uh, the idea, and he says that I have a better idea. You turn the page, and he's fighting one of the Maulers. So we know that you know he has the idea to put a version of Rudy into a version of his body, so that Rudy would essentially be in charge. Um, so he enlists one of the Maulers. One of the Maulers brings up the fact that you killed my twin, my clone. Um, and he's like, why would I, you know, why would I listen to you? And Mark's like, why, why don't you just make another? And he's like, the Viltrumites are constantly hunting me. I have no time. Um, and so he convinces him to come, you know, and he's like, I would have killed you by now. So the Mauler comes to work with them. And, uh, you know, Mark tells him the plan that you'll be able to, uh, you know, be me essentially. Um, and then uh, let's see, the work continues. So Mark at this point has to communicate to the Viltrumites that he is held there against his will. Like they will not proceed further unless Mark stays there. Cause now he has to play both sides and like kind of make it an excuse for why he's spending all his time here. Um, so he tells the Viltrumites that like, uh, I, I could leave at any time, but I'm staying just to make sure it gets done, but don't try looking for me. It's fine. Everything's under control. Um, it'll be done soon. And then they'll, you know, I'll get the device. Um, so then we've got, what was it? There was a moment where uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, he's talking to one of the Maulers and he reveals that, you know, one of the Maulers comes up to him and he's like, you're not him, are you? And Mark's like, no, I'm not. And one of the Maulers says that, here, I got to read this, um, you know, because they talk about, Mark says, I didn't know if I could trust you. The Mauler says, uh, you know, it's true that before I wanted to rule the world, I cloned myself to accomplish that goal, but only because I thought that I, we could do it better. 
seeing the governments of the world overthrown, seeing one power try and manage it all, it just doesn't work. I've seen the error of their ways. All I want to do now is stop them and restore order. So put a pin in that for a second. Where do the Maulers yeah. end in the end of this series? It's there. It's yeah. in that point. Yeah. And yeah. also yeah. like Rex, I mean, also being opposed to a Rex version who is doing a similar thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like one mind controlling everything. Yeah. Yes. Which now, you know, uh, so there's there's not much here. We're almost done. We got uh, weeks later because this whole thing takes about five months, I believe they say. Um, yeah. And so they finish the process. Uh, they transfer uh, his um, Rudy's mind into this clone of Mark and uh, the proximity alarm goes up. The Viltrumites are here and the Mauler's like, there's nothing we can do. They brought the monster. And we oh, see this is the money conquest, shot. Krieg, you know, Lucan and Anissa and Anissa is holding this, a baby. And this and is why you chose this, this issue. I feel this, like is, this I is mean, one of the everything about this issue is so cool. But yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So, and this says that, you know, our, our emperor is being held hostage. Project be damned. We have to send a message. And Conquest says the last time we unleashed this beast, it was, I'm not sure we will be able to contain it. And this says it will have a long path of destruction, but it will tire and then it will, it will slumber. This is the best way. She throws this baby that then transforms mid flight and turns into this, you know, Godzilla of a monster yeah. girl. Um, and, uh, just kind of showing us that like as amanda gets younger the monster form gets stronger and bigger you know we see in the the origin story for amanda that the first time she turns the monster looks like her almost like it looks like a person um yeah. but it becomes more like hideous and more you know monstrous the younger she gets and the further tra the transformation goes so in this universe monster will continue to get younger and younger and so this thing is just destroying the entire um, teen team base, uh, the the, uh, um, the device is complete. The transfer is done. Mark gets sent back to his home dimension, um, and uh, the robot in Mark's body um, flies up to the Viltrumites and says, "You know, they destroyed the machine, but there's you know there's no time. We need to stop the monster. This is the dawn of a new Viltrum Empire, and we never see him again, ever again." <laughs> And we just get to sit knowing that there is a universe out there where Robot is in Mark's body who has taken over the world and killed Eve and and Rex and there's a little baby kaiju monster. Do, do, do you guys think, <laughs> like, and, and like we were talking before, like Robot always ends up in control. Do you guys think that this robot ultimately goes down the same path as our main universe robot? Mm, I don't know, because he has the Viltrumites on his side to kind of manipulate them to do his bidding. Cause think, Mike, but how could he take them all out? So like, much of what happened to Rex that caused him to do all these things was what happened with him and Amanda and the Flax on Dimension and everything. Yeah. Like that. And clearly Amanda in this issue is not that Amanda. So will mm -hmm. he have those experiences? Will he always lead to that? Because and then in reboot he says, "I've always known deep down that I'm capable of something." Yeah. You know? So it's like it's. I think. Thing. I think a big part of the whole Flaxen thing too was that enough time had passed for him to like you know work through what he wanted to do. It was like 700 years that they were in the Flaxen dimension. So, yeah, I think that a, a, the same possible outcome could happen because he's in a Viltrumite body, mm -hmm. presumably, right? Yeah. And he'll he'll be able to live long enough to kind of, you know, yeah, have have those. Feelings be. It would be away. really fascinating because I've always wanted to go back to this universe to see these characters. Right. But man, yeah. what if what if we go back to it and it's like decades and decades later and it is a very different thing and it is a version of Mark that is robot esque in his oh. like dictatorship. And it's like you became the thing that you originally wanted me to to replace like god it's so can you imagine if one day we did get a sequel series about tara or marky and they go through a dimension and you end up in it would have dimension. been that and it is like, like yeah if tons of years later oh yeah oh. they're like dad and he's like not quite and it's like yeah it's like 30 yeah. years later or whatever and yeah. you know 
or even hundreds because you know tara would still be young enough looking or something or at some yeah. point yeah or marky yeah at some point when they were young ah, enough it would be so cool for them to cool. go through man but yeah, that's one of my favorite issues. I'm a sucker for yeah. alternate universes. I'm a sucker for all mm -hmm. those kind of things. They touch on the themes of Mark and this, you know, this darkness in him and that all these different versions, they expand on that instead of just talking about him like they had kind of done in the past in the comics and like the show, they, we really got to see it for the first time. Um, yeah. But then of course, you know, more, more robot, more monster girl, some of my favorite characters. And I, and I think there's some added tension in that in that issue specifically because going into it we know that mark and eve have a big fight before he goes there like she slaps him i think because yep. she's oh. saying you shouldn't go and we also know that eve is pregnant when mark is stuck there for months on end like yeah. knowing those things and and having all of that just in the background or while all of this other crazy stuff is happening like i remember reading this being like but wait a minute if that's months then is the, the baby already having like you're feeling all of that stress in the same way that mark probably is in the story too oh yeah very cool so yeah so that does it for our issue spotlight who is up next it we always is... have this we got to keep this in the notes it's it got to be me no it's bill yeah. it is in the notes hmm. yeah yep. bill you're up next yep. the list of which ones we've already read are also in the notes did the notes yeah um hmm. So that does it for this episode. Remember to check out our conversation with Damien from Ubisoft Barcelona Mobile. Um, we had a great chat talking Guarding the Globe, and um, we're hoping to have another guest for our next episode of the podcast, which will be very fun. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, at some point within the next month or so, we're going to try and do another Other Stuff show live stream where you guys can come into the chat and talk about us, where we talk all sorts of things that aren't invincible, because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. There's been so many games and shows and movies that we want to talk about. Um, but there's too much invincible goodness. So we'll be back soon with another episode. Until then, we'll see you around. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. And if you were listening to this on your drive, I hope your drive was great, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or if you're just staring at a wall, ignoring <laughs> your family, it's over now. I'm sitting at the dinner you table. You can talk to them. <laughs> yeah, you can talk to them now. <laughs> Tell them how great the podcast was.